Hello YouTube, this is Matthew Gadinius, and I recently made a video about how I'm gamifying my classroom uh, with Pokemath, Gotta Solve Them All, the uh, Pokemon-themed gamification of Khan Academy math skills for my math classes. Um, so far it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun for the students to try to catch them, uh, and some students didn't know how to get them, and they finally mastered some skills. They're very excited, so I've got a folder here that this student begged me to update with the Pokemon. Um, but some people have caught on to this thing that I'm sharing on my blog and I've shared it on the internet. And some other teachers are doing this and kind of wanted to know the logistics of how to figure out which Pokemon have been caught and how to give the students those Pokemon and assign those stickers. So what I have here is a sticker sheet for the student. I printed one of these for every student so that they can, in theory, catch them all. And I've also got a folder. This has their math work in it. Um, even though we're doing things paperless on the computer, um, they don't all have paperless devices that will let them write on the screen, so I have them write their math work on paper because that's really important to, sh to show their work and actually do the math. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show the process of how I go through Khan Academy, check the student skills that have been mastered, find the corresponding Pokemon, and put it on the inside here. I'm not going to put it on the outside of the folder. I'm going to put it on the inside as a Pokedex right there. Uh, because that'll protect the stickers. They won't get worn out. The colors won't fade. They won't get um, rubbed off somehow. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we set up the logistics of Pokemath. And I only do this occasionally. I was going to do it every week, but it does take a little while for 80 or so students that I have. So I've changed it to about once every couple of weeks or once a month that I'm actually collecting the folders on a Friday so I can do it and have plenty of time not have to worry about it. Let me show you the process for how I check the mastery of skills for the Pokemath game. Uh, I only need two things for this, and that's to be signed into my Khan Academy account, my teacher account on Khan Academy. It'll take me to my dashboard here, and this shows me my different classes and the students in them. And then I also have, for reference, my Pokemath table, because even though I created this, there are 151 different Pokemon, and I haven't necessarily memorized which exact math skill goes with which Pokemon. But as you do this more as you go along, you'll notice you'll start to remember without having to look it up which Pokemon is which math skill, especially because students will probably be uh, mastering the same skills around the same time, depending on what you've learned in class. So the first step is to go to this student progress tab up here. This is the way I do it now. It's the easiest way for me because I can go through student by student. And I've got my set of folders, but I want to choose the correct class here from my class list since I have multiple classes. And um, the first time you do this, you want to include all of the skills that have been mastered. Now right now, this is only showing skills that were mastered in this date range. This activity from range is very important. I could expand that a little bit to show you over here. This is what it looks like normally. It's right next to it. The activity from range tells you what has happened since that point in time. So this is since August 19th what has happened. But I want to give Pokemon the first time for everything that's been mastered at all, period. So to do that, I would change the activity range to all time. After the first time assigning the Pokemon stickers, you would actually want to use that activity range, and you could just look up what has changed since the date of your last Pokemon update. And that way, you won't have to be checking which stickers they already have. It'll only tell you the new ones they get if you set activity range from the previous Pokemon collection date. And like I said, I do this uh, either once every other Friday or um, once a month would be a good time schedule for doing it. So now I can see this dark blue is the mastery and it shows me at a glance how many Pokemon each of these students has caught, how, how many they have earned by mastering the skills. So to actually check which Pokemon to assign to the students, you'll go through one by one. I'm going to click on this student since I have his folder here ready to go. And down on the side, you'll see a little overview, and the dark blue are the skills that have been mastered. That means they've been done in the Mastery Challenge. Uh, if you just click the link over here to go to it, it lets them get this light blue, which is practiced. But after they practice it, they need to do Mastery Challenge to actually get mastery. So you can see there's several in this Mission Foundation section. What if I want to know which Pokemon that matches up with? Well, over here in the table, I can press Command-F or Control-F. So Command F on a Mac or Control F on a Chromebook or Windows. And that's the find in document shortcut. That's the keyboard shortcut to open this find search button. So I'm going to search for compare decimals through thousands. And you can see it jumped me straight to that location. So you have to type it long enough to get to the part where you're looking for. 
and then I can see that's compared decibels through thousands, which is Caterpie. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that Caterpie sticker in the inside of the folder in the Pokedex for that student. And I can see here down below, I don't even need to search necessarily because the next one in that family, I'm going to stick to the right of that first sticker so I can keep the family together. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. But this is multiplying decimals too. Standard algorithms, so that's Metapod, and then dividing decimals hundredths is Butterfree. So you can see these are related and they happen to be mastered in order there. There's also a multiplying fractions mastery. So I'm just going to go through each one, and as you do these, you'll start remembering eventually, depending how many students you have mastering those skills, you'll see a pattern and start remembering, oh, that was this Pokemon. But if you don't remember, you can always just search. Now this is multiplying decimals, so I still need to keep typing. Now I'm at multiplying fractions, which is Ekans. Then I can do adding decimals tenths. So this student's going to be very excited to have this update happen. That's Weedle. And then he also has hundredths, which is Kakuna. Still needs practice on adding decimals to the thousands place, which is Beedrill. So that's how you go through and check each of them. They'll be in order, uh, more or less, if you set it up the right way. Then the mastery of the earlier ones should be the earlier Pokemon early on in the form. But if you don't know, you can always just search. Okay, so we have now gone through Khan Academy and assigned all the Pokemon stickers based on the mastery skills. You can see it on here on the list. So here's our Pokedex. The reason I set it up this way is I start each family going down the row here, going down the column, and then I leave room to evolve them going across to the right. And so then I can start another column over here with the beginning of other families. So that's how I'm organizing it. You don't have to do it that way, but it keeps the families together so you can see what the evolutions are if you put the stickers in this way. Uh, I'm kind of saving the pocket down here for more rare or one-off Pokemon that don't necessarily have a family. Um, and of course, this wouldn't be able to fit all 151. You might also have to use the back inside flap as well. So there you have it. That's how it works. It takes a little bit of time, but it gets faster as you go along, and uh, it's not too bad. So hopefully you and your kids will enjoy doing this.